On this occasion we will discuss the history of the Ostrogoths. The Ostrogoths were the eastern tribe of the Goths, a Germanic people, who rose in power in the area north of the Black Sea. The designation, Ostrogoth, taken to mean, Eastern Goth, actually means, Goths glorified by the rising sun, and was coined at the same time as the term Visigoth, interpreted to mean, Western Goth, by the Roman writer Cassiodorus L., circa 485 c. 585 CE, to differentiate between two distinct populations of Goths. The Ostrogoths seem to have originally been known as the Gruthungi, also given as Groitungi, as referenced by the 4th century CE Roman historian Ammianus Marcellinus and the 6th century CE Gothic historian Jordanes. Cassiodorus lived among the Ostrogoths and served their king Theodoric the Great r. 493 to 526 CE. In an attempt to simplify the designation between the Germanic tribes which had moved toward the west, and those who remained in the east, Cassiodorus, deliberately or mistakenly, interpreted, Ostrogoth, to mean backquote Eastern Goths and the others then became, Western Goths, but the people themselves did not think of themselves along those lines. The Visigoths would, in time, accept and apply that term to themselves and the Ostrogoths had long known themselves by that name but neither tribe would have considered themselves, Eastern, or, Western, Goths. The Goths first appear in history living in the area around the Black Sea. They made constant incursions against the provinces of Rome and proved a resilient and perpetual nuisance to the empire until the invasion of the Huns in 375 CE. A large portion of the populace, according to some sources, 200,000, fled the area to seek the protection of the Roman Empire under the Emperor Valens R. 364-378 CE, and these people became known as the Visigoths. The rest of the people remained, enduring the rule of the Huns, but retaining a certain degree of autonomy. After the death of Attila the Hun in 453 CE and the dissolution of his empire, the Ostrogoths declared their independence. Eventually, under Theodoric the Great, they migrated and settled in Italy. Theodoric established the Ostrogothic Empire but his successors came into conflict with the Byzantine Empire which sent the general Flavius Belisarius L. 505-565 CE, to bring the Goths back in line in accordance with Byzantine interests. The last great Gothic king Totila R. 541-552 CE led the Goth resistance against the Byzantines and, after his death in 553 CE, the Ostrogoths lost their autonomy and ethnic identity, merging with the people of Italy, the Lombards, and dispersing into the regions of modern-day France and Germany. The Goths, those who would eventually be known as Ostrogoths and Visigoths, probably originated around the area of Gdańsk, Poland before they began migrating to the regions of modern-day Germany and Hungary. This claim for a point of origin, however, is highly contested with scholars such as Peter Heather arguing in favor of it and others, such as Michael Kulikowski, against. The difficulty in establishing a point of origin and cultural identity for the Goths is that they had no written history prior to their engagement with Rome. All that is known of the Goths comes from the Roman writers, except, of course, for physical evidence brought to light by modern archaeology. Scholars like Kulikowski and Walter A. Goffard point out that, since nothing can be known for certain of Goth history prior to the Roman historians, any claims regarding origins and ethnic identity, apart from the claims of those historians, is merely speculation. These scholars have also claimed, with good reason, that narratives built on physical evidence are still speculative because that evidence is interpreted in light of a pre-existing scholarly narrative, not objectively. In other words, these scholars claim, Archaeologists who interpret finds such as the 3,000 Gothic tombs in eastern Pomerania, Poland the so-called wheelbark culture discovered in 1873 CE, tend to understand the evidence in light of Jordan's 6th century CE work Getica, a history of the Goths, and ignore other possibilities. The claim that the wheelbark culture discovery, proves, a point of origin for the Goths, then, is untenable because it is just as likely that the area excavated was a Goth settlement established after they had left their earlier homeland. Peter Heather and others argue that Jordan's work, even though it makes ample use of mythology and legend, still provides enough historical fact to be of use. Further, since Jordan's Getica was based on Cassiodorus' earlier work, and Cassiodorus knew the history of the Goths firsthand as a writer in Theodoric's court, more consideration should be given to Jordan's work and it should not simply be dismissed because the author felt the need to enlarge his narrative at points with fantastic mythological events. The Goths who interacted most closely with Rome were the Visigoths. The Ostrogoths remained in the east in the region of Hungary. When Attila the Hun r. 
434 to 453 CE, came to power, he took Ostrogoth land and added it to his growing territory. The Visigoths were dispersed by the Hunnic invasions and driven into Roman lands but the Ostrogoths continued to remain where they had been. With the death of Attila in 453 CE, the Ostrogoths declared their independence and joined with another Germanic tribe, the Gepids, under their leader Arderic L. circa 450 CE. At the Battle of Nidau in 454 CE, the Gepids under Arderic defeated Attila's sons with the support of the Ostrogoths although precisely how the Ostrogoths contributed to the victory is unclear, and the former vassals of Attila's empire were free and settled in Pannonia. The Ostrogoths were led at this time by the King Valamir L. c. 420-469 CE who, like Arderic, had been one of Attila's generals. Valamir's Ostrogoths continued the policies of Attila in raiding Roman territories and exacting protection money. In 459 CE, he raided Illyricum and then demanded 300 pounds of gold in annual tribute from Emperor Leo I. R. 457 to 474 CE, of the Eastern Empire to keep him from doing so again. Valamir died in 469 CE after being thrown from his horse and he was succeeded by Widimir L. 460s CE, and then by Theodemir D. 474 CE, father of Theodoric the Great. Theodemir made peace with Rome and young Theodoric was sent to Constantinople as a hostage to ensure compliance. The prince was treated well in the city and was educated in Greco-Roman values at court. Although the war continued under Totila's son, supported by the Franks who had been his allies, it was ultimately crushed by Narses. Later uprisings failed and, by 562 CE, the name, Ostrogoth, had disappeared and a significant number of the population dispersed themselves into France and Germany. With the land depopulated and ravaged by 18 years of war, the Lombards, another Germanic tribe, easily conquered northern Italy in 568 CE under their king Alboin R. 560-572 CE. The Ostrogoths still in Italy allied themselves with the Lombards. The Lombards had previously been allies of the Eastern Roman Empire and had served in the Imperial Army against Totila. When they arrived as invaders, they found Italy largely deserted and were welcomed by the Ostrogoths, more or less, in the hope that they would restore the land. The Lombards, beginning under Alboin, did so and maintained the Lombard kingdom for the next 200 years. The cultures of the Lombards, Romans, and Ostrogoths gradually assimilated to become the people of Italy. Thank you for following our videos, don't forget to share, like and subscribe so you can always follow video updates from us.